Good morning, everyone. Although it's probably evening wherever you are in the USA or all over the world, let me know where you're tuning in from as soon as you jump on here on the live. I'm Sharon and I'm from the blog I Restore Stuff, but we're here today with Essential Stencil as one of their ambassadors to uh, share with you a DIY project. As always, we teach you great stenciling tips. Um, hi, Kathy, how are you? If you are watching the replay of the live, I'd encourage you to comment the word replay and you have another chance at uh, winning an Essential Stencil prize. Hi, Elisa from Florida. I'm just looking down here on my, um, on my computer because sometimes the comments don't pop up on the phone. Alrighty, we are ready to go. Now, I, I did uh, pop a little hello in to the uh, Essential Stencils Stencil of the Month Club Facebook group. Now, if you're not in the Stencil of the Month Club, um, you can be in that for and get 50% off your very first month using my code iRestoreStuff. Um, and then you'll get to be a part of the Facebook group. You'll learn lots of tips and tutorials there, but also you will get three stencils, whole sets, like huge stencils every month, as well as the optional add-on. So that's a great uh, fun membership to be a part of. There are lots of subscription details. I've got um, the details up in the link in the description of the live here today. How are you all today? Now I said in the Stencil of the Month Club group, I popped a little photo and said I'd be working on using milk paint today. So I'm using actually Miss Mustard Seeds milk paint and we're gonna be creating some fun boards, sign boards for our stenciling projects today. Here's one that I picked up just at a thrift store. Real easy to find some of these things from people who wanna do crafting and then they get life gets busy and they're getting rid of all of their crafting things. So thrift stores are a great place to pick up cheap little finds like this. This is actually solid pine wood, it's not MDF. So I'll be using milk paint as a stain and as a paint today. So if you've never used milk paint before, I also have uh, an affiliate link for the Miss Mustard Seeds milk paint where you can get 10% off if you wanted to try that as well. Um, I might just pop that in the comments right here just so that I can remember and if Essential Stencil sees that and you wanna put it somewhere else, that's great. So uh, the, the Miss Mustard Seeds milk paint I'm using today, I'm going to start with showing you how to use it as a paint for the background of a signboard. Now you could use it as a paint or a stain, lots of fun to use. I'm using the color Shutter Gray. So I take my big packets and I empty them into a jar like this so it's easy to work with. Oop. Now I've just shaken that bottle so it's, stir it's um, misting, the cloud of paint is misting. It's powdered form, so it's not in a jar. It's actually Oh, hello, everybody's jumping on to say hello. Hi guys, hi Candy, Cindy, lots of C names today, Diana. Um, so milk paint usually comes in a powdered form and you just mix it with equal parts water to powder and you've got yourself a paint. Now I always feel like, um, I feel like to dis I've used milk paint for such a long time and I love to describe it as a primitive type paint because I feel like I'm back in the olden days, mixing, creating, um, using when I use milk paint. Okay, so I'm just gonna use a mason jar to mix my paint in. And some people get intimidated by um, the fact that you have to mix the paint with water, but really if you can make hot chocolate by adding a bit of powder to a bit of milk, then you can make milk paint so easy. So you just get your powdered form, I use equal parts, so I'm just using these little scoops and they're about a tablespoon. Well, it says on here 15 mils. 15 mils, is that a tablespoon? See, in Australia, our tablespoon, our measures are a little bit different to the USA and that's where I'm from, I'm from Australia. So um, our measurements are just slightly different. I'm using one scoop of powder to one scoop of water. Now, what I'm gonna do is actually put my water in first and there's a reason for that, only because the powder sometimes gets stuck to the bottom. So what I'm gonna do is do my water first. So one scoop of water, hopefully you can see this. If you need to move the comments aside, just swish them aside. One scoop of water to one scoop of powder. So I do a lot of furniture painting and if I was doing furniture painting with the milk paint today, I would um, use a lot more than just one scoop. 
probably, but it does have great coverage, like there's that too. So this is gonna be a gray color. And if you look at the powder, when you open up a um, packet of Miss Mustard Seeds milk paint, it's not necessarily always the same uh, color because when those pigments hit the water, they actually change color. Now you can use just an ordinary whisk or you can use one of these. It's like one of those milk frothers. Um, let me just see, buzz that around. Now what I'm gonna do is just mix it with, without turning it on first. And all I'm doing, let me let you see that up close, is mixing it around with the whisk and haven't even turned it on yet but if I, I probably don't need to just until all the little pig um, lumps dissipate dissolve <laughs> if you've just joined me we are mixing milk paint it's such a lot of fun I feel like I'm a real artist uh, when I mix up the milk paint okay so it's you can see in there it's just a lovely gray color now I'm going to turn it on, but you want to be careful not to just splatter it everywhere. So I'm just letting it bump the bottom of the jar up and down a little bit. If you've got too much froth, frothiness in there, um, this mustard seed milk paint actually now has this milk mix ease, an anti-foaming agent, and all you need is just like a drop or two in there um, to just take away those bubbles so they don't but I usually just brush them out you can do that okay so now we've made our milk paint and I've only made a tiny bit today because all I'm painting is a signboard in fact this could probably just go who was that just said Patty says she loves milk paint yes it's so easy to use so all I do is pop that now in some water did I put water in there yes I did and I've got my milk paint so this is using it as a paint, and I'll show you in a minute how to use it as a stain. I've got some clues as to what stencils we'll be using today. So we've got Gone Fishing stencil set. We've got a little mini tag with the Gone Fishing. I'm gonna show you how to mix up these in a little bit. So we've got our beach set there as well. All the links to the things I'm using today, stencils I'm using today are going to be in um, the live. So if you haven't tried milk paint, I can give you there's a link that I posted in here earlier via essential stencils um, as essential stencil you'll see that where you can use my code I restore stuff and get 10% off your milk paint but we will show you you can use your code my code I restore stuff and get 10% off any of the stencils we're using today also so there it is just like paint now, milk paint is a porous finish. If you um, follow my blog, I Restore Stuff, I've got a great article over there on the difference between chalk paint, milk paint, and mineral paint, the different types of furniture paints that you'll see on the market today. All right, so we're just gonna paint that nice and smoothly. With milk paint, you may get a few little granules. What we like to do is often just sit this for a few minutes to make sure that those are smooth. But I love it for a good, um, it, it is self-leveling. I love it for a good antique finish over furniture. Now I'm doing this on raw wood. If you were to do it on a piece of varnished wood, you may get some um, chipping and flaking, which is also a desired finish for a lot of people to get that antique kind of a look. And you'll get that with, depending on the varnish on, that has been you know, used beforehand. Now that's got really good coverage. I'm doing that on raw wood. Milk paint just soaks into the raw timber, but you will see a few little granules. I don't know whether to do the sides or not. It kind of looks cool, unfinished. I may even just stain those sides. But have a look, if you can see really closely, it's covered that really well. You might be able to see a few little granules on there. They will sand off smooth or you can just um, leave them there and add the texture. But usually you'll want to just sand back a little bit that finish. I'll just do it on the top there. Leave my brush right there in the paint because now I'm going to show you how to use it as a stain. And I'll set this aside to dry. I do have my hairdryer handy so that I can dry that off and get a good dry finish ready for our stencil. But... Um, 
I've loved using uh, Miss Mustard Seeds Milk Paint for such a long time. It's a really gorgeous paint to use. This board, if you missed earlier, I picked up at a thrift store. Lovely, great place to find uh, craft things because people, you know, get rid of their craft stuff and don't want to do it anymore. All right, if I'm going to use milk paint as a stain, I want to water it down a bit more. So for using as a paint, and all the instructions are usually on the back of your milk paint packet, so it'll say how to use it as a paint, how to use it as a stain, you want to water it down a bit more. My rule of thumb is generally to use about three parts water to one part of the paint powder for a stain. For a paint, you want equal parts. So there's one water, and this is going to make a lot of stain because, which I don't need for this, this, um, this little project. So we've got three parts water and then we'll just get one scoop of the powder. Could even do less. And we'll make our stain. Now this is the colour Curio, which is Miss Mustard Seeds Milk Paint's brown colour. I have got a bit less than, than the one scoop in there. A bit harder to get out when it's right down to the bottom of the jar. And then again, we just want to whisk that, stir it around. But you can see that it's very watery, very runny. When you're making a paint, um, the, when I made the paint earlier, when it comes off in a, in a steady stream, which it is before I kind of get it out of the jar, when it comes off in a steady stream like pouring cream, that's when you know that it's, it's um, good to go. But our stain is going to be very watery. And so that's actually going to look more like it'll just be drippy, really drippy off the brush. So that's our brown. It looks very dark, but when you paint it on the wood, you'll see on this raw wood, it soaks straight in. What's the number one milk paint to start with, Sonia says. Well, I've used Miss Mustard, Miss Mustard Seeds milk paint has been around for a long time and I've used it since I started furniture painting about 10 years ago. And um, I really love it. So that's really the only one I know of. There's a couple of different ones here in Australia, but they're not in the US, so that's what I would start with. I've got a link there, an affiliate link, if you wanted to use that, but just ask me for it again if you didn't see that before in the comments. And I'm happy to give that to you now. As a stain, let's have a look at this, very watery. Milk paint is great for raw surfaces. It soaks right in, penetrates into the wood, and uh, oops, we've got a bit of water there. And it's a great way to finish your project. It, because it's a porous type of paint, though, um, you will have to. You now you can see that's kind of uh, I don't know what you call it, resisting the surface. So maybe there's something on this surface. But what we do for a stain is we paint it on. I'm going to paint it all around the edges here too. Paint it on and then remove the excess. So, but you'll see that this is actually drying really quickly within not very much time. <laughs> and I've, I've not even literally dipped my brush back in yet. So with milk paint, you may see a couple of little streaks being that the pigment might not have been properly mixed in, but I do love the variation that you get with this age-old paint type technique. See that little red streak there? I don't know if you can see that. Painting it with this chain on. I could have removed that chain, but hey, just doing a stain with milk paint. And because it's a water-based product, it will come off the metal um, if I wiped it straight away. It's not too messy. Easy cleanup. Brushes just dip in water. Okay, so just let me get the end there. We've just jumped in. We're using milk paint to use it for a backing for our signboard. And then I'll show you what stencils we're using today. <coughs> All right, if you've got any question, oh, Rhonda's asking what kind of brushes. I'm using the Klingon brush. This is just an F30. I use a few different types of brushes. For my stenciling, of course, I use the gorgeous essential stencil brushes. Um, now, I'm getting my cloth 
just a shop cloth to just wipe off any excess stain that, that will be sitting on the surface. Okay, so if, you, if I let that sit and just let that penetrate the wood even further, I can see little bits where I've missed. This is the end grain, which always turns out a little bit darker than the other surfaces. I was going to say something before about um, the need for sealing milk paint. So if you're using milk paint as a paint on your furniture, it will need a sealer, otherwise it is quite a porous finish, similar to chalk paint, how you add a wax or a sealer onto the end of that. Yeah, Tricia, I've got a link for some um, milk paint. Oops, oops, missing the comments, sorry. And they're scrolling past and I can't see them very well. So this is using it as a paint, and I do have a link there that you can use. Um, you can get 10% off using my code iRestoreStuff at the milk paint link. Okay, here is, isn't that gorgeous stain? Now that'll dry and it'll look quite um, light colored when it's dry, but as it's wet, that's the look that you should be looking for when it's finished. I'll show you when it starts to dry. Now look, I've got a bunch more stain in here that would do me several signboards, so many. So I had this thought before that I could stain the edges of this just for some kind of different look. So I've used the color Shutter oh. Gray in Miss Mustard Seeds Milk Paint for this gorgeous gray finish. I was thinking I could use this stain. Whoop, let's see if I'm in the shot. <laughs> That's not helpful to stain the edges here, but I have to be really careful because it's going to go over the edge. But that would also be a nice look. To finish off your signboards. So if you're new to stenciling, we're going to get started with stenciling in just a minute. I just wanted to show you, we show you a lot of stenciling tips, but here's some tips for using to finish off your signboards with. Okay, so just let me do that one side so that we can see that. And I didn't bring a sandpaper. I'm using the back of that to just gently sand my surface. Now you could just use that, leave that one coat on there or you could do a second coat which I might do now using the paint. So what we did to make the paint if you can remember is um, using one part powder and we've used Miss Mustard Seed in the colour Shutter Grey so I emptied my packet into these jars to make it easier to scoop out scoop one scoop of powder to one scoop of water. Yeah, let me know in the comments if you've ever used milk paint before. And I'll just show you what it looks like just using that and I'm being very careful not to make it go over the edges because I like that stained idea. Just let me show you half and half. So it may not be as visible on the camera that that is a little bit more solid finish than up here. I can just faintly see, but that shutter grey has really good coverage. Whereas if I was using a white um, in the milk paint, it may not, you know, you need a few more coats going over wood. Hi Maggie. Hi Joyce. Hoping everyone is having a wonderful evening. I love that you guys all jump in on the comments and <coughs> chat amongst yourselves and to me. I love it when you chat to me too. Now, um, Essential Stencil will be picking prizes at the end of our live, prize winners at the end of our live today. So don't forget to stay tuned until the end. Take part in the comments. All right, so I've finished painting that. And we do have to get a little bit more on the edges there. And I've stained the side. Can you see that with the milk paint stain that I used before? I may just need to grab a little bit of sandpaper to sand off that edge. I'm going to dip my paintbrush in the water now to rinse it out. Easy finish. See how that's drying? The stained look. You can see where it's wet. There's still little patches, but it'll dry kind of a really light color. And then when we finish it at the end, it'll be um, a lovely deep rich stain again. I'm just going to add a bit of heat to dry off my board. Um, oh, Joyce is asking why do they call it milk paint? Okay, hopefully you can hear me over my hair dryer. Um, but it's made using the protein in milk called casein, 
and that's where milk paint gets its name from. So milk paint usually only has about five natural ingredients. So you've got the casein, which is the milk protein, which is why it's called milk paint, um, limestone, um, natural pigments. I think there's like a, limestone might be the chalkiness that it gives. Okay, so we'll let that dry a little more. And our signboard right here is ready for stenciling now. So let's take a look at some of the stencils we've got ready. So there are so many different things you can do with milk paint. If you visit my YouTube channel, you'll see that I have a lot more tutorials on there. And my um, link, my YouTube name is I Restore Stuff on any of my YouTube channels. Any of my YouTube videos, you'll find me at I Restore Stuff. Here's that stain brush and so I'm going to pop that into a plastic bag because I want to stain the edges of that board again in a minute. Thank you Kristen. Yeah that grey is lovely isn't it? So you can just pop your lid on your milk paint and they recommend popping it in the fridge and, and it'll last you know seven days in the fridge if it's mixed up whereas as in its powdered form if you just leave it on the shelf it will last forever. Kind of like milk powder when you pop it on the shelf it's gonna um, it'll it'll last forever but if you mix it up it's going to go off so you just want to mix it as you go for what you need it for all right this is a cute sign I mentioned before I found it in a thrift shop so I'm going to pop it down here and use our beach stencil so we've got beach six by six inches and there's six stencils in this set if you have not seen this one before the links are in the up in the uh, description of the live. Now I will mention that tomorrow uh, Essential Stencils is having a site-wide huge 25% off sale for St. Patrick's Day. It's actually St. Patrick's Day right here in Australia today but for one day only starts at midnight and if I, I would love it if you'd use my link that's in the description of the live um, right there after midnight you can um, check back and find that link or any of your ambassadors Favorite, your favorite ambassadors links you can use those too um, to take advantage of that site-wide sale so you can get this after midnight tonight and you can get it 25% off so there's take me to the beach which I'll be using that one um, life is better at the beach Oop, there we go there's that actually I might use that one and then mix mix up I like to mix up my stencils we've got the cute turtles and we've got I love you to the beach and back there is this little mixture of corals, which is gorgeous as well. So if you don't have this one already, and sand, surf, sun. How fun are they? I'm also gonna be using these fishing stencils in a minute. So yeah, Essential Stencils just um, got that link there. So if you use those links after midnight tonight, you will get the 25% off site-wide sale. So find those links, save them somewhere, and use them after midnight. All right, I'm gonna use my tape today because instead of these, what do you call these, sand dollars? I'm gonna add some of these starfish and shells from the other signs to create my beach sign today. So maybe I'll just, I'll use that dollar shell but I'll tape off this one and use something different up here. Because you can mix and match these stencils just like that. Using my essential stencil brushes you can use milk paint as a stain, as a as a um, stenciling medium also, but it is a little bit runnier. I will use that today just for fun. Let's have a look. Dipping my brush into the paint that we made using one part powder of milk paint and one part water. Just offloading as much as you can, and you will find that it's a little bit runnier. You may need extra um, coats. On this one so let's see how it goes or you may prefer to just use your craft paint or acrylic based resin paint to add that on so I'm just going to hold this with my hand today I'm using the 5 8 inch brush you can also get the percent off with the sale assuming it's site-wide at midnight tonight for your brushes if you're needing some extra brushes that's a good idea okay using my milk paint to stencil and this is a gray color I'm actually thinking that it probably will be a bit better to use the white on the brown because the gray is blending in a little bit too much 
but that's okay. I'm sort of pouncing and smooshing at the same time. I'm going to go back over those two. And this sand dollar, did I call it the right thing? <laughs> Hi Dawn. Hi Lisa. That's okay, you're not too late. Never too late to alive. You can always catch the replay as well. And um, we love it when you join in the conversation there as we always do here at Essential Stencil. You can win prizes at the end of our live. I'm using milk paint. If you missed that part, you might want to go back and see how I used milk paint to create. Uh, first of all, we made a paint using milk paint powder and then we made a stain for this board. So just going to repeat myself a couple of times for those who missed the beginning of our live. I'll join in the conversation. So if you do have any questions, I always go back and, and um, answer them after the live because I can't always catch all the comments coming through. Okay, so that's that grey. And as you can see, it's a little bit too dark for the brown. But milk paint still does a great job at stenciling. So there's that. But maybe if I had used a white, it might have been a bit better. But I can let that dry and do a shadow technique using that with the white. So it will dry super fast. Milk paint dries very fast, especially because we're putting it on raw wood. So let me pop that aside for a minute. And I'll put this brush in a wet cloth because then it won't dry out while I'm painting something else. Okay, so here is where our milk paint uh, is all finished and it's got sort of a porous, not rough, but it, it, you can definitely feel little granules and you can um, get over that by just giving it a nice smooth sand. And before I just went over this with my rough cloth because I forgot to bring my sandpaper out, but you could use brown paper. Have you ever seen that trick? When you just wanna create, it's almost like a 400 grit sandpaper and it just gets it a little bit more smooth on the surface. And then I used some of that stain that we made with the milk paint on the edge. So here's the before and here's the stained edge. So I like that look too. And I was very careful not to let my drips from this paint get down to the sides. That is really, it's honestly a practiced technique. So um, yeah, Michelle, it's a really pretty grey. It's very blue. It's quite a bluish grey. So if you like those blue tones, it's nice, cool grey. Okay, popping that aside, if you are going to use your milk paint again, it's better to have um, a smaller jar if we've got a small amount of paint and pop a lid on it because then you won't get so much um, air in the container and therefore um, it will, what am I trying to say? If you get air in there, it, it dries out quicker. So, yeah, lots of people have never painted with milk paint before. It's a lot of fun to use. I use it for painting furniture because that's where, it, you know, where I started using it was when I started pa painting furniture. You can get some lovely old world looks and I was going to give a little go of just see that how that's varnished. I found some timber that has been previously varnished. So I was going to give that a go and let me just do that really quickly. Uh, just showing you what milk paint looks like on a varnished surface because sometimes you can get a lovely fun crackle on that. I'll just pop this aside once I've put this on and set it aside and see if we come back to that and see what it looks like. Obviously that's just one coat so it does self-level because it's quite a thin paint. It's not thick like chalk paint. So I'll set that aside see what that does. But you can make it crackle, you can force the crackle to happen uh, by actually applying heat or if I sat that out in the sun right now or applied the hairdryer when you're doing it on top of a varnished surface you might get some extra crackle which is a lot of fun to see. All right here's our next lot of stencils that I'm using for today's project. We've got the fishing three pack set so here it is and we've got the words gone fishing we have bait and tackle. I love this. I just love the old world vintage sign look. Worms, minnows, lures. Linda says, thanks for showing us these tips. You are welcome. I have so many more um, 
tutorials on milk paint over on my YouTube channel and on my blog, irestorestuff.com. And you'll find, if you just search the words milk paint, you'll find all of the different furniture pieces that I've painted using milk paint. Lots of fun to use. All right, so that pack, that will also be on sale tomorrow, 25% off in the one day sale. Starts at midnight, so make sure you use my affiliate link right there in the description. I would love you to do that um, to take advantage of that. So we're using that gone fishing sign, but as you can see, it's not gonna fit on my sign board that I happen to have in my garage. So I'm just gonna use the word fishing, but look what I found. I found the word gone in this gone fishing set, which is the three pack minis. It's a fishing mini set where they're for the, made for the wooden tags, but honestly you can use them on anything and everything. So let me just show you those real quick. We've got the gone fishing. We have a fish, which we could also use as well. You could stick that fish on the side there, although that doesn't fit either. But we've got this little case of, and a fishing rod case of um, tackle. So that's out of there. So I want to use that. The links for all of these are right there in the description of the live or in the pinned comment right there. So if you use my link, save that somewhere for the sale that starts at midnight tonight. Okay, you're going to need some tape for the word gone because I don't want that to show up right there. Now, if your tape tends to be too sticky, sometimes it's you can tape it onto your clothing and it'll add a little bit of fuzz so that it will uh, not stick too much. You want it to stick down, but not too much. And I might add some here to the fish. Kathy's adding that to her list for tomorrow. Yeah, don't forget to save my link to use that right there. Okay, so the word fishing, if I move it across to the left here and I'm gonna center it to the board, but then I wanna use the word gone on this side but I'm going to use it this way because I looked at this and this is pretty much exactly the word gone is exactly the same size as the font right here. So if I use the word gone on the side, I just figured that's a fun idea to use. So let's see if, how that works. <coughs> um, might take this one down and to do this stencil, I'm going to use Let's take that to my clothing again. Getting lots of tips today, I hope, guys and gals. <clears throat> yeah, Charlotte says milk paint is beautiful. I like it better than chalk paint. It doesn't reactivate, but still has the matte look. Yes, it's lovely. And great on raw wood, it really penetrates the raw particles. And so it like almost fuses to the wood when you're using it on raw wood. I'm gonna use the black paint today that I have on hand. It's just an acrylic furniture type paint in the color jet. So if you're in Australia, you can get this from my website, irestorestuff.com. But <clears throat> if you're in the US, you can use any craft paint you like in whatever color you like. Just use a dark color over this color blue or a white would also stand out nicely as well. So this is the kind of gray, this shutter gray is the kind of gray that would, you'd be able to use on all sorts of things. I'm actually just offloading my paintbrush you can't see that I'll do it down here so you can see before we stencil we offload the brush as much as we can this is the three-quarter inch essential stencil brush so I've offloaded I've lined it up as best as I can and I'm going to just use nice circular motions over my milk paint and because it's a porous surface this paint is really going to adhere well so if that was a a finished surface or a glossy surface it has a little bit um, probably a bit harder time sticking to the surface but because it's porous paint will go straight on all right another little dip just as you start to run out of paint on your brush just dip it in again wiping it off on the edge of the container and always offload your brush as much as you can Oh, thank you, Kimberly. Mary Jo says, I've never used milk paint. Is it better than chalk paint? You should look at my blog post that's called, um, what's the difference between chalk paint, milk paint, and mineral paint? And I talk about all the differences there and what I love about each one. So I don't know that there's any 
better than. Um, they're just different types of paints. And so really it's kind of an individual, um, you know, assessment of what you like, what, you, what your preference is really, of what you like better. I like using milk paint for certain types of furniture. It can be used on lovely modern pieces and sleek finishes. You can get a lovely smooth look with milk paint. But I do prefer to use it on some of my pieces that they may have been varnished before and you can get that old world chippy look with them. I've got a little bit much on my brush so you'll notice I start pouncing if I think I've got a bit too much. So I spread it around and then I can start swirling. If you do have a little bit too much on your brush, it's better to just offload a bit more before you start swirling. Okay, so that's gone on nice and dark enough. And let me show you the finish. Whoops. Hopefully I centered that. It looks a little bit low, but that's okay. Fishing, there you go. A nice crisp line so we don't have any fuzzy edges. And mostly the reason for that is because we have offloaded the paintbrush as much as we could beforehand. So that will dry super fast because I'm using those um, acrylic chalk paints. I may even have enough on my brush for my gone word. So I'm going to use the word gone over beside here. And let's see if I do need a line or anything in, in with that. I do need some, do need some tape. Whoop. Be careful when you're peeling your tape off your letters. That's why I try to detack it first by putting it on my apron. And I'm going to use that for the fishing rod that's right here. So oh, I think that's about centered to the word. Whoop, <laughs> let me get this on first. And then I'll so this little area goes up a bit here, so I'll have to redo that. There we go. Okay. Holding that tightly. Let's see if I have enough on my brush from earlier. Oh, and I just noticed this little bit out to the side. The G for gone. I probably will go off the edge if I start doing that there. So I always tape where my letters might come off the edge of the stencil. Okay, so I did mention earlier there is a flash sale tomorrow only, site-wide, 25% off St. Patrick's Day sale. And I would love it if you used my link that's right there in the description of the live. After midnight tonight, you can get all of these. Everything that I've got on today is for 25% off. Okay, here's the word gone. Let's see how that worked out. Does that look okay? Gone fishing. We could have actually put it on the side on a little diagonal like this. That would have looked cute too. Maybe could add <coughs> a little line like a fishing rod in there. What about that? I wonder how that would look. This is just me thinking out loud right here. And we could make that fishing pole go right off the page. If I use that, let's see how that, that might work. <laughs> Who else loves to mix and match their stencil sets? Oh, there's that one again. Okay, mixing and matching is such a fun thing to do. Oh, I didn't um, add to my little sign down here. I was going to add some other things. So what I'm going to do is add this to create a line in between gone and fishing, just to create some depth. Let's see, we still have enough paint. No, we don't. So we're just going to add a touch more using that that I had on the side. That might be enough. Nope, still not enough. Let's go for the deep, deep dive in the pot and wipe the sides again. Because I only have such a tiny thin line to, to do. Oh, you can co connect it to the fishing lure. Oh, I could. Oh yes, we could have done that too. What a great idea. It's a huge fishing lure for such a tiny rod. But yeah, we could do that. It does go off the end, so it could look like, let's see if that works. Who had that idea? That's a great idea. I love it. That's why I love it when you guys are in there in the comments. So here's the fishing rod. 
and someone just suggested, and I forgot to check whose name that was, to connect this to the lure. And look what I see over here is this, this little um, line right here. Maybe we could do it with that. I don't know. I don't know how that's going to work. Maybe it will, maybe it won't. Yeah, not sure how that will work, but you could make it work. <laughs> I'm sure you could. I'd have to concentrate a little more. But there's our gone fishing sign using milk paint on the background. And we've got a stained, whoop, that's not stained. This is stained here. But then we're going to use some hemp oil to finish it off. So I'll set that aside to dry and let's finish off our beach sign over here that I was doing earlier. Shift our fishing stuff. And I said that I was going to add something from these other signs and I didn't. So let me do that. Pop my, um, this brush aside. Let's see if I've still got enough gray paint on here. Here it is. Um, to do some starfish. Let's see, they might come out a little bit longer there, but that's okay. And some tape. I'm always reusing whatever I've just been using. So for example, <coughs> do my fishing. Fishing becomes now beach. Beach fishing is a thing. I mean, especially here in Queensland, uh, that's a favorite pastime. My grandparents used to do is to take us fishing at the beach. All right, I think I've got everything there ready for our milk paint that I had setting aside here. Tapping a little bit more in the jar, adding a bit more. This is just for this part here because I'm creating a shadow. I'm going to use white over the top of this. So just wanted to make it the same as the others because I said I was going to add it and I totally forgot. Yeah, there we go. Just a little brushing from the side. I don't even mind if those centers aren't properly filled. So there's life at the beach. Now let's look for the white to cover that. Pop my lid on my black and I'm just using a, this must have, oh no, what is it? Fusion mineral paint, Victorian lace, just a white color to add to the sign that we just did earlier. So that is pretty much all dry now. So I can go ahead and pop this down. So in creating a shadow, as you've seen probably on several of my lives before, if you have seen other lives, if you haven't, go back and check out some of the other lives I did on shadowing. If you go to the essential stencil uh, video section right here on their page, you'll see I have done several videos on shadowing. You can go to my playlist or I think there's even a shadowing playlist you know they do a playlists on different techniques that we use okay so what I need to do first of all I line it up where is exactly the line up of the original words and things that's it exactly now I just move it slightly to one side Oop, let's go this side and slightly up a bit shifting it slightly up a bit a bit and you probably didn't even see how I shifted that so and I've got to concentrate now so let me do that okay I've dipped my white in now I need to offload that onto my cardboard which is becoming very colorful here from all the different weeks that I've used it yes Kathy says she loves the stencil of the month design and you can't wait to get that happy mail yes if you haven't joined the stencil of the month club yet you will see the April design um, is ready now I think to order use my code I restore stuff if you're not in the club and you can get 50% off your first month it's an amazing um, community there to be a part of because you'll get uh, lots of inspiration from so many of the other stencilers and sign makers out there showing off how they use essential stencils as well in the stencil of the month Facebook group but you do get delivered to you three huge stencils every month and there's an optional add-on and someone I heard saw someone just before mention that they love the add-on for April and I can't wait to get the set just to get the add-on so that's always a wonderful feature 
because everything coordinates nicely with each other in the stencil of the month club sets and sometimes I'll use some of the exclusive stencil of the month club sets with mix them with some of these sets that are just on the essential stencil website okay so I've shifted slightly to create a shadow so we're using that milk paint gray as the shadow in the background and this is just a fusion mineral paint acrylic based paint that I'm using for the um, lettering to create a much brighter look against the dark someone else said they once um, they haven't tried the shadowing yet just practice on a piece of cardboard you can see I practiced on my cardboard some stenciling looks using that sunflower stencil you can see in the background here that was a while ago I actually did that on a live but yeah I encourage everyone just practice doing your shadow techniques on a piece of cardboard this is just an old moving moving box you can use your old cereal packets and open them up and just you know it's free <laughs> comes with your cereal some of you have got Amazon boxes that just need to be opened and used as practice boards <laughs> okay let's see I'll have a little peek oh I think I like that now I just have to so you can see when I pull this off how much more let me see I just feel like I need a little bit more over here how much brighter that turns out once you've got that shadow going on so my little sand dollar is a little bit lighter but that's okay so you can see let me see if you can see the shadow behind it maybe just slightly I'm not sure if it's focusing for you there so now I need to go back with the star fish and again put, putting that exactly where I had it and then shifting it slightly across and slightly up I'll get where I want it to be for the shadow and then I want to show you how to um, seal your boards using some hemp oil which is also um, this mustard seed product and you can get that I'm going to go in towards the center of these stars and not be concerned too much with finishing off the center so you can see still see a little bit of that background kind of worked kind of kind of sorta yeah I like that that's cute but you will see when we st when we finish that off with hemp oil how much how rich that stain looks using the milk paint as a stain it's great so that's the color curio in the background then shutter gray we used for that blue look so popping these aside I will clean them off later don't you worry uh, Rhonda says that's what I had to do my words were too dark and you did a lighter shadow and it looked way better yeah you do need to have two contrasting colors so dark and light no matter what you're using just to have a look at it so when I saw that that blue was not going to be contrasting enough for that um, sign mm. what I did was uh, just went over it with a brighter white and created that shadow I'll lift it up a bit more and see if you can see that gray just in the background as a shadow it's really subtle but yeah that's just pretty much dried quickly now we've got the gone fishing I'm going to just use now Miss Mustard Seeds Milk Paint has this gorgeous little milk oil which is actually a lovely hemp oil finish and if you just use a lovely cloth you'll see how nice it goes on and it deepens the color so now that this is dried I won't put it on the sides well I've only finished that one side see this is where I didn't stain it and this is where I have so I'll go on and finish that because I've got a lot more stain left that I made earlier if you missed the beginning of the live um, <clears throat> I need another brush and I'm out of brushes I will use this one so or I could just use a cloth I'll just use a cloth so you can just grab a chucks cloth and I'll go do this one first since I've only just painted that but it'll be the same on either one and if you missed my milk paint link I did that at the beginning of the live just go through the comments or I'll or just ask in the comments if you want the link to get 10% off Miss Mustard Seeds milk paint using my code I restore stuff I can give that to you so I'm using an oil now you could use a, a finish like a sealer on top of this and this is the difference so it just deepens that color I'm not sure if you can see that there it won't be glossy like that so you can see the end here is dry and this has got the hemp oil on it um, 
it won't be dry like it won't be real wet and glossy like this it does dry and it penetrates into the paint so we'll finish that off and then I'll show you see I hardly had any hemp oil on my cloth just literally dabbed the top and you've got your whole sign finished there was a question in the stencil of the month club uh, earlier this week about milk paint and finishing it for outdoor signs I'll show you on this side here too so there's the so if you're doing outdoor sign uh, outdoor finishes you may want to find a sealer that's good for the exterior but if you're doing milk paint on raw wood it really does like it's just infuses with the wood it goes into the grains and so you pretty much got a like a finish a signboard finish that will last forever um, okay so I still have oil on my cloth and it's gone right through to the other side now I'm going to show you on this stained wood how lovely the oil brings up that stain use a lint free cloth this is getting onto the end grain and it's causing a few little um, hairy bits. <laughs> so I will get that off later. But I'll do half so you can see the other half, how it is when it's dried. You can use a brush to brush the hemp oil on or just a cloth like this. If you're brushing it on, always remove the excess with a cloth. So this kind of removes and does it at the same time. So you can see the lovely rich finish we've got minus that fluff on the end there that cloth I should sometimes I use an old t-shirt that is clean so you can see the difference here's the dry wood and then here's the hemp oiled finish hemp oil is really good for um, finishing off also it re, um, rejuvenating old furniture so if you have something that's really really dry wood and you want to keep that raw timber look hemp oil is a great finish for that um, I would say someone asked about waterproofing I would say that hemp oil it more is like a water resistant not so much a waterproof because over the years you would it's like those deck oils that you got you would have to refinish it every now and then so that's what hemp oil would do so if you're using it outside you can use tongue oil also that's a possibility there's other oils there that are used for outdoor use I'm still getting fluff on the end so we'll finish that one off later but you get the idea there is our life is better at the beach sign and we're going to pick prize winners in just a minute let me see <clears throat> but all of those links to all the stencils and I'll pop if you need the Miss Mustard Seed mil Milk Paint um, link I can give you that in a minute also so you can use my code for 10% off there but don't forget the site-wide sale that Essential Stencil is having tomorrow for St. Patrick's Day one day only starts at midnight tonight and you can use any of my link right there in the description of this live save it somewhere save it on your desktop save it on your um, I don't know on your notes <laughs> and you'll be able to take advantage of that so let's have a look who's our winners today I hope you enjoyed that and learned something about milk paint that some of you maybe have never used a milk paint before and you've you're gonna have a look at that and go well wow, yeah that's looks like a fun finish so you can see that's a little bit shiny and glossy right now but it, I promise you I'll take some pictures of that later when it's quick it's dried out a little bit more we've got our gone fishing sign and life is better at the beach and we've got that lovely hemp oil look on the finish of it there too so yeah great idea for um, finishing off it also rejuvenates uh, leather I've done leather boots with it people have done leather handbags with that milk oil hemp oil stuff really good stuff all right let me see if I am looking right now and looking for our prize winners uh, we have prize winners any time any moment now coming from essential stencil but let me see what your comments are saying you enjoyed this thank you Bronwyn you'll have to try milk paint now yeah let me know if you need the link for that if you didn't catch it earlier I will um, pop that in as I go through and answer questions Christine says you always learn a lot that's amazing I love it um, and our, here comes our winners and our winners today are Cindy how do we say that Mergi, Margi and Kimberly lovely three winners today and we will um, see you again next week for another live if you are 
watching the replay, don't forget to comment the word replay uh, if you're watching the replay and there's another chance they'll pick another lucky prize winner after the live is over within 24 hours. So hi Kim, hi Susan, thank you so much and congratulations yes to those winners, Cindy, Mergie and Kimberly. I hope I said your name right. Um, I'll see you next week for another fun live. Happy St. Patrick's Day tomorrow, everybody. And um, don't forget, site-wide sale, 25% off. Use my link. Thank you. Bye.